much though he recites the sacred texts, but acts not accordingly, that heedless man is like a cowherd who only counts the cows of others. He does not partake of the blessings of the holy life. Little though he recites the sacred texts, but puts the teachings into practice, forsaking lust, hatred and delusion, with true wisdom and emancipated mind, clinging to nothing of this or any other world, he indeed partakes of the blessings of a holy life. See, to truly understand a Buddha, you have to know the difference between information, knowledge, and wisdom. Buddha is a man of wisdom. He is not a man of knowledge or information. The words that are coming out of his mind are contextual. He is using the words that he is familiar with, that people around him are familiar with, but he is pointing to something deep, something beyond. That is the hallmark of a Buddha. On one end, he is very ordinary. He is simply using whatever that is available around him to communicate his message. But on the other end, he is referring to something that is entirely non-contextual. He is pointing to something that can take an individual beyond his immediate social, religious and cultural influences. We can see the same pattern in Buddha's words, in Jesus' words, in Lao Tzu's words, in Muhammad's words, in all the enlightened teachings, we can notice these two things. One is something immediate. You can see the simplicity of words. But at the same time, you know you are in the presence of something different. Whatever they are speaking about is not immediately available. You cannot search for it in the outer world. It requires understanding. It requires intelligence. A man who simply clings to words, there's a beautiful Zen saying which says, truth is like a finger pointing to the moon. If you cling to the finger, you will miss the moon. Words are fingers pointing to the moon. Scriptures are simply directional. They are only pointing us in a certain direction. Now, what we do with the scriptures, how 
do we understand words? How do we interpret them? That is what makes all the difference. Because nothing can liberate you like words and nothing can bind you like words. It is words that become fetters, that become chains, that become belief systems. And it's those same words that lets us fly that lets us become everything we are meant to be. Exact same words, the way you see it makes all the difference. Same words, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Nothing different from what Buddha was saying. Whatever you're searching for is within you. Nothing different from what Ramana Maharshi was saying. You are searching for your true self. But what did we do with Jesus' words? Turned it into something totally different. Their meaning was interpreted In a way that it took us far away from his life and his message. It became a blinding ideology. And how easily words can be misunderstood, misinterpreted. Why? Because the words are closer to us than their meaning. A Buddha is far away. He is living in a realm of his own. He is swimming in his own ocean of aliveness and consciousness. His truth is far away from your truth. His world is something entirely different from your world. But his words are very close to you because he is using such words that you can easily understand. So it is natural for his words to appeal to you. That is why unless you are truly searching, you are truly seeking the truth, somebody can use those words to keep you close to them and far away from the message. All religions have done this. They have made words into the ultimate reality. They have brought the words of these extraordinary individuals as close as possible. They recite them every day. They live in them. They swim in them. They chant them. They believe in them. But they are so far away from the actual meaning of those words. They're nowhere near interpreting those words because they have been taught to cling to words, not interpret them. Bible was recited from the pulpit to those individuals who could not read and write. More often than not, in a language that they could not even understand. It was simply a feeling. It was simply a sensation. 
Because there's no need to understand. There's no need to interpret. As long as you know these were the words spoken and there is an authority figure reciting those words, you felt close to truth. That is the fascination with religious scriptures. If one wonders, why is it that despite nothing coming out of these places, not a single individual has awakened through formal religion. Not one Buddha has come out of a religious institution. Not one. There's no exception to this. Why are people still fascinated with formal religions? Because they are not looking to become the Buddha. They are not looking for the awakened one. They are not looking at Jesus and saying, I want to be like him. You want to be anything but him because you've been taught that it is impossible to be like him because he was born special. Right there by saying that you are totally different from him. He was special. You are disconnected from the truth. Now, you're not going to the church to understand Jesus, to interpret his words, to walk his path. You're going there to cling, to cling to his words, to cling to that finger pointing to the moon. Religion is that signboard that has become so important, people have begun to worship it. It's literally around the world, people are worshipping signboards that says left and right. Instead of using those signboards to walk in that direction, they don't want to go anywhere. They don't want to look in any other direction. They just want to sit and stare at that signboard. Jesus hanging on the cross is a signboard. The reclining Buddha and all the golden statues for Buddhists are just signboards. But they don't look at them as signboards. They look at them as the end of their journey without realizing it is only the beginning.